Hello and welcome to Mary Live. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli. My friends in Jesus and Mary, the church approved messages of Our Lady in Akita, Japan, are receiving a lot of attention in our present moment, and with good reason. The message, the church approved message approved by Bishop John Ito in 1984 after consultation with Cardinal Ratzinger, at that time prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, speaks about events which are happening in our time. Uh, one particular event that's capturing a lot of attention is where Our Lady says that there will be, quote, cardinal versus cardinal, bishop against bishop. But there is more relevance to the Akita message, and oftentimes we just focus in on that dimension. So in today's program, I want to go through the three revealed messages of Akita and also to explore the statement of the bishop, Bishop Ito, who approved Akita, when he said that, quote, Akita is the continuation of Amsterdam. So let's first examine the three messages of Akita, and then we can talk about why the bishop would connect it so clearly, so essentially, so causally, to Amsterdam and the reported apparitions in Amsterdam. Uh, a very brief background, we're talking about mystical experiences that started in 1973 through 1981 involving Sister Agnes Sasagawa, a Japanese nun in a convent dedicated to Eucharistic reparation, handmaids of the Eucharist, uh, the, the name of the religious order. She is a late vocation. Uh, she is hearing impaired. She has been has been deaf since she was a child. But as these mystical experiences start to happen, Our Lady promises her that she will be healed of her hearing impairment. And in fact, she is in 1981. Just as, a, a, again, a brief summation, you have a phenomena which starts where Sister Agnes uh, receives a stigmata in her left hand, her left palm, extremely painful. At the same time, that there is blood coming from the statue, a three-foot statue of the Lady of All Nations. And this, of course, is the first reason that Bishop Ito says uh, there, it, it's a causal, it's a continuation. Uh, Akita continues what happens at Amsterdam because it's, in fact, a statue of the Lady of All Nations, a three-foot statue that was carved uh, at the commission of another religious sister, not Sister Agnes, after she believed she received a miraculous healing from the Lady of All Nations through prayers uh, to the Lady of All Nations. Again, reference of the reported apparitions in Amsterdam. So as a sign of gratitude, she hires a Buddhist sculptor, uh, this other religious sister in the community. And that three-foot statue of the Lady of All Nations begins this phenomena of having blood coming from her hand. And it's a rather fascinating phenomena because although there's significant blood, it, it never leaves the palm of the hand of Our Lady in the statue. And at the same time, it's, it's her right hand on the statue, but for the visionary, uh, Sister Agnes, she begins receiving a stigmata in the form of a cross on her left hand. And that's when the mystical phenomena uh, really initiates and then increases it's also important to note that the guardian angel of Sister Agnes, who plays a significant role in these mystical experiences, the guardian angel teaches Sister Agnes the prayer of the Lady of All Nations, at least the essential prayer form of the Lady of All Nations, in preparation for these mystical experiences. Uh, I think uh, one can see almost co-naturally why Bishop Ito would say that Akita is the continuation of Amsterdam. But let's go to the three messages. Uh, the last message is the one that tends to hit the press, but the, the first two give context to it. So the first, and how does that happen? Well, at three in the morning, Sister Agnes is uh, woken by her angel. Uh, again, in some uh, capacity, the prayer of the Lady of All Nations is taught to Sister Agnes to prepare for these mystical experiences. And... Sister Agnes is, is bid to go to the chapel 
Then she sees the three-foot statue of the Lady of All Nations uh, beaming with light. Uh, and at that point, she hears... Now, again, uh, Sister Agnes is hearing impaired, so she can't hear externally with her senses, but a voice comes from the statue, and Sister Agnes hears it, as she calls it, with her spiritual ears. This is the first message. This is July 6th, 1973. My daughter, my novice, you have obeyed me well, abandoning all to follow me. Do you suffer much because of the handicap which deafness causes you? You will be surely healed. Be patient. It is the last trial. Does the wound in your hand give you pain? Pray in reparation for the sins of humanity. Each person in this community is my irreplaceable daughter. Pray very much for the Pope, bishops, and priests. Since your baptism, you have always prayed faithfully for them. Continue to pray very much. Tell your superior all that has passed today and obey him in everything that he may tell you. Your superior is wholeheartedly seeking prayers now. So that's the first message. And just for context, her superior is, uh, her spiritual director, the superior, of course, the ultimate superior is the bishop, but uh, her spiritual director is a Father Thomas Aquinas Yoshuta, who, with another author, Francis Fukushima, will author a book entitled uh, Akita, The Mother of God as Co-Redemptrix. And the spiritual director will repeatedly say, this is a message, Akita is the message of Mary Co-Redemptrix. That's why she's crying. That's why the statue is crying, as we'll speak about in just a moment. Second message, August 3rd, 1973. Same phenomena takes place. She's directed to go to the chapel. And this these words come from the statue of the Lady of All Nations. Uh, it's interesting to note that in these messages, Our Lady never gives herself a new title, uh, which is somewhat, which is odd within apparitions. Almost in every case, Our Lady, Our Lady says she's coming under this title. But if, in fact, Bishop Ito is correct that these are the continuation of the reported apparitions of Amsterdam, that could be the reason why it's not given a new title. She doesn't even call herself Our Lady of Akita. Second message, quote, August 3rd. My daughter, my novice, do you love the Lord? If you love the Lord, listen to what I have to say to you. It is very important. Convey it to your superior. Many men in this world grieve the Lord. I seek souls to console him in order to appease the wrath of the Heavenly Father. I wish with my son for souls who will make reparation for sinners and the ungrateful by offering up their sufferings and poverty to God on their behalf. In order that the world might know the wrath of the Heavenly Father towards today's world, he is preparing to inflict a great chastisement on all humanity. With my son, many times I have tried to appease the wrath of the Heavenly Father. I have prevented the coming of the chastisement by offering him the sufferings of his son on the cross, his precious blood, and the compassionate souls who console the Heavenly Father, a cohort of victim souls overflowing with love. Prayer, penance, honest poverty, and courageous acts of sacrifice can soften the anger of the Heavenly Father. I desire this also from your community. Please make much of poverty, deepen repentance, and pray amid your poverty in reparation for the ingratitude and insults towards the Lord by so many men. Recite the prayers of the handmaids of the Eucharist with awareness of its meaning. Put it into practice. Offer your life to God in reparation for sins. Let each one endeavor to make by making much of one's ability and position to offer oneself entirely to the Lord. Even in a secular institute, prayer is necessary. Already souls who wish to pray are on the way to being gathered in this community. Without attaching too much attention to the form, pray fervently and steadfastly to console the Lord. Is what you think in your heart true? Are you truly prepared to become the rejected stone, my novice? You who wish to become the pure bride of the Lord? In order that you, the bride, become the spouse worthy of the holy bridegroom, make your vows 
with the hardy readiness to be fastened to the cross with three nails. These three nails are honest poverty, chastity, and obedience. Of the three, obedience is the foundation. With total obedience, follow your superior. Your superior will understand you well and guide you. Notice, my friends, how intense this message is, which is almost never discussed. The wrath of the Heavenly Father. You know, and this is not the Father losing his cool. This is justice in light of the constant, the, the seeming ubiquitous rejection of the plan of the Father, of the gift of Jesus Christ, of the present and sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit in today's world. Tragically, uh, even as just one small example, but it's not small in the eyes of heaven, I believe, uh, in the vote of uh, November 6th, uh, the state of Ohio now approved a, quote, constitutional right to abortion at any level. Now, I mention that, not that it's unique uh, to this state, but Ohio has always, always been seen as kind of a Midwestern, uh, generally moral, uh, uh, natural law type of state. They're, they're, they don't have the, quote, extremes of, you know, the, the Californias on the West Coast or the New Yorks on the East Coast. That they would pass a bill allowing abortion at any time. Let's call it what it is for the love of God and his mother. It's a, a, a quote, right to kill babies anytime you want. Anytime after conception until a moment before uh, birth. This is barbarous. This is straight out barbarous. And this, then, and they bring it up because not only that it just it just happened, but this is considered a quote moderate state in general, a moral state uh, within the United States. And so, what does it say about the pulse of the United States? And of course, we know that places like Western Europe already suffer deeply from abortion and. And now having things like euthanasia happen, happening to, uh, to children uh, who are uh, uh, perhaps in, in some a special needs situation. That's happening in the Netherlands now. So this is serious. Worldwide, we're talking about 43 million abortions worldwide. That will induce the wrath of the Father. Those are his favorites, we know from the Chaplain of Divine Mercy. The little ones are his favorites. And so, yes, there is a wrath of the Father. And Our Lady is trying to appease that wrath and she's calling for sacrifices. Notice how she makes reference to a, a cohort of victim souls. But even if we're not called to a primarily victim soul uh, vocation, like people like Padre Pio or Mati Raban in, 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 in France who didn't use the restroom for uh, over 20 years because she lived only on the Eucharist. Those are exceptional cases of victim souls. But we're all called to participate in offering prayers and sacrifices through Our Lady to appease the justice of the Father. That's what this message is talking about. And so we have to see this third message in light of what Our Lady has kind of warmed up with, and that is the Father has a rightful justice in light of the rejection. Remember, justice is not the father losing his temper. Justice is giving someone their due. And this is the due, a great chastisement, is the due of humanity right now that rejects flatly and directly and arrogantly the reality of God, the necessity of his commandments, and the precious blood of Jesus Christ, which is necessary for salvation, uh, which is being thrown back. Uh, much of humanity is saying no thank you to the gift of Jesus, uh, let alone uh, that coming through Our Lady as well. Uh, so this is the scenario. Let's go to the third message. Uh, and I also uh, would point out the importance of religious life and those three nails, poverty, chastity, and obedience, where she says, obedience, Our Lady says, obedience is the foundation of these. That means uh, there's suffering involved with those. Of course they are. That's, that's a religious life. That's why it's the highest objective calling in the church and the highest imitation of Jesus himself. Uh, and so how important that is, because we're going to see in the message, also reference of priests uh, 
losing their vocations, leaving the service of the Lord. And so Our Lady says, pray for the Pope, for the bishops and priests. And obviously, Sister Agnes had been doing that since her childhood. All right, October 13th, 1973. This is the big message that is, again, making the rounds in many Catholic uh, commentaries and blogs. Quote, my dear daughter, uh, sorry, obviously October 13th, 1973. When's the solar miracle at Fatima? October 13th, 1917. The, the continuation is obvious. That's why Akita has been called the Fatima of the East on several occasions. Quote, my dear daughter, listen well to what I have to say to you and relay my messages to your superior. As I told you, if men do not repent and better themselves, the Heavenly Father will inflict a great punishment on all humanity. It will definitely be a punishment greater than the deluge. The deluge is the flood. Such as has never been seen before. Fire will plunge from the sky, and a large part of humanity will perish. The good as well as the bad will perish, sparing neither priests nor the faithful. The survivors will find themselves plunged into such terrible hardships that they will envy the dead. The only weapons which will remain for you will be the rosary and the sign left by my son, typically seen as the Eucharist. Uh, it's certainly, that is the ultimate sign. That sign could also be referenced to some type of visible sign as we uh, see at some of the other apparitions. Each day recite the prayers of the rosary. With the rosary, pray for the bishops and priests. The work of the devil will infiltrate even the church. One will see cardinals opposing other cardinals and bishops confronting other bishops. The priests who venerate me will be scorned and oppressed by their confreres. Churches and altars will be sacked. The church will be full of those who accept compromises and the demon will tempt many priests and consecrated souls to leave the service of the Lord. The demon is trying hard to influence souls consecrated to God. The thought of the perdition of so many souls is the cause of my sadness. If sins continue to be committed further, there will no longer be pardoned for them. With courage, convey these messages to your superior. He will tell each of you to continue prayers and acts of reparation for sins steadfastly while ordering all of you to pray fervently. Pray very much the prayers of the rosary. I alone am able to still help save, excuse me, to still help save you from the calamities that approach. Those who place their total confidence in me will be given necessary help. Now that's an extraordinary message. A few comments. Uh, from this time, from, from 1974 to 1981, that statue of the Lady of All Nations will weep 101 times. I don't mean just a 101 lacrimations or individual tears. I mean times of consecutive tears. 101 times. Six times the bishop was there himself. These tears were tested and are of human origin. There was unfortunately a, a, a somewhat dubious uh, uh, theologian who said, well, these are probably just Sister Agnes uh, projecting her tears onto the statue. Well, A, uh, that's not something we can do, right? Have you ever tried doing that? You know, having a tear and having it fly across the room, go onto a statue. Uh, B, uh, the tests show that, uh, excuse me, the, the witnesses show that she was not doing that, including the bishop six times. It's really a rather extraordinary to even bring up that as a possibility. So these tears, and the tears would happen 101 times. Sister Agnes would explain, excuse me, Sister Agnes's guardian angel would explain that the 101 times signifies, the first one signifies Eve, the zero signifies uh, God in his un, in an un, ending, unending circle, right? Infinity. And the second one signifies Mary as the new Eve. That's why the spiritual director was so strong in saying this is a message of Mary co-redemptrix, including the tears she's shedding at the thought of so many souls being lost and of the chastisement coming. Now, Sister Agnes was asked in the early 2000s whether this 
great chastisement, greater than the flood, could be averted. And she said, no, but it could be mitigated. And I'll say this once again, we've done this on other programs. Don't underestimate the power of mitigation. Mitigation can mean millions and millions of people. Just because it can no longer be completely averted does not mean we're not called to continue to pray and offer. And you, you heard Our Lady's messages, the rosary. Uh, I stumbled in that, in that reading that one part because it always reminds me so powerfully of what Our Lady said at Fatima. It's almost verbatim. She, at Fatima, she uses third person. She alone can save you from the calamities that approach. And here, I alone can save you from the calamities that approach. Why? Because this is the mission that the Trinity has given Our Lady. She is the remedy. How do we know? Because God tells us that. And it's revealed through her message. Remember at Fatima, God wishes to establish devotion to my immaculate heart. Now, this has a massive relevance to the statement of Bishop Ito. Once again, his quote, Akita is the continuation of Amsterdam. Now, we saw that the statue of Akita is from the Lady of All Nations. Can you imagine the Blessed Mother using a statue from a false apparition site to convey miracles and a true message? It's, it's nonsense. It, 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 it's, it can't really be tenably held that Our Lady would use a false apparition image to convey this critically important message for the church and for the world. Secondly, Bishop Ito, you know, why does he say Akita is the continuation of Amsterdam? Because the prayer of the Lady of All Nations is also uh, taught in, in its essential form to Sister Agnes in preparation. But also the theme continues. Now, I want to say with total respect and obedience to the December uh, 30th, 2020 statement regarding Amsterdam. And again, just background for those who uh, uh, perhaps are not familiar with this. The Amsterdam apparitions were approved by Bishop Joseph Punt uh, from the, the ordinary of Harlem, Amsterdam from 2002 to 2020, 18 years of approval. There's never in the history of the church been an apparition approved for that long that was then denigrated to a, to a second tier from constat to supernaturalitate, that this consists of a supernatural origin, to non constat. Remember, non constat means that it does not confirm nor does it deny authenticity. It is not condemned. That's constat de non. That's a third category. So for 18 years, cardinals, bishops from all over the world are coming. Cardinals from the Vatican coming to the International Prayer Day in Amsterdam. And then on December 30th, 2020, uh, the new bishop makes a statement which uh, seeks to take the status of Amsterdam in terms of uh, its apparitional authenticity from approved to the middle category. Now, to be fair to the new bishop, uh, I do not believe that this was done at his initiative. I'm not going to get into those details. They're not important, but I think it's only fair and just uh, to acknowledge that this was not done with the initiation of the new bishop, who, uh, by the way, was present for the prayer day, the last two prayer days in Amsterdam of the Lady of All Nations, where he spoke powerfully and beautifully about the importance of the prayer of the Lady of All Nations, which again still is approved. So what does the December 30th, 2020 statement say? That the apparitions cannot be considered uh, or just, just, cannot be distributed, I should say promulgated, as authentic. That we go now from constat de supernaturalitate after 18 years of approval to non constat, which again means it does not confirm the supernatural char character, nor does it deny it in the classic understanding of what non constat means. In fact, in many of the Vatican translations of a 1974 statement of the congregation, uh, particularly in the German and the French, it's very clear. This is simply saying uh, it is not confirming. It is not clear in the German. So anybody who says the Amsterdam apparitions are condemned is simply not conveying an accurate message about the Vatican's position on this. Now, so with respect to that statement, we will not uh, quote the messages 
of the Lady of All Nations. At the same time, uh, there's no forbidden book, and certain themes that are reported in that message are critically important, uh, even to understand Akita, because Akita is talking about a great calamity, a great disaster, a, a great chastisement. So does the reported message of Amsterdam. It talks about a great catastrophe that can only be averted through the praying of the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. And if you had to summarize the, the reported message of Amsterdam without quoting uh, the messages uh, in obedience, the whole backbone is a call for the dogma of Mary as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate for what? For peace. She repeatedly says in the reported message as a theme that only with the proclamation of the dogma of Mary co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate can Our Lady intercede for, intercede for peace, true peace to the world. And several times she'll say, why are you hesitating with this dogma? And she again will repeat, only with this dogma can I intercede for peace. So as a theme, it's really the same theme that Cardinal Mercier had in 1915 while he started the movement for the Fifth Marian Dogma. That is, we have to acknowledge Our Lady's roles so she can intercede for peace. That can't be forced upon us. Our Lady won't do that. God won't permit it. We've got to freely acknowledge that she is the spiritual mother of all peoples, the co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. And then and only then can she then intercede for the grace of peace. So you have to understand what happens at Akita, that message of a great chastisement, in light of the reported apparitions, which again, uh, we, we say in total obedience, are not to be distributed uh, as authentic messages, but these themes are critical. How much longer, my friends, how many more Israel-Palestine or Russia-Ukraine events do we need to come to the conclusion that what Our Lady is saying in these messages are true? She's the remedy. We have to acknowledge her role and that there is a great historic chastisement coming. No one likes to hear about chastisement. But if Our Lady, in an approved apparition of Akita, is speaking about it, that means, uh, and, and really, we have this from Fatima anyway, because that whole solar miracle event is to predict a coming down of the sun, fire falling from the sky, which you heard is in the Akita message. This is simply going to happen. And that's why a good mother warns her children of the challenges. And so we have to respond. So I would, I would maintain that the proclamation of the dogma of Mary as our spiritual mother, spiritual mother of all peoples, which include her roles uh, of co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. Some people, sometimes people say, well, do you need all three of these roles? Look, the ultimate definition will be up to the Holy Father, but if you're saying she's the spiritual mother of all peoples, you have to tell people how. What does she do as spiritual mother of all peoples? Well, she suffers for us, uniquely with Jesus like no one else. That's her role as co-redemptrix. She nourishes us in the spiritual order. That's her role as mediatrix of all graces. And she protects us, especially in times of difficulty. That's her role as advocate. So that's how she is spiritual mother to us. So clearly, in some form, those realities would have to be contained if we're really going to proclaim the truth about Mary as our spiritual mother. And I want to also mention, by, by way of theme, the Amsterdam message is a profoundly, the reported message, we'll, again, in, in obedience, is an extremely Eucharistic message as well. After the reported apparitions from 1945 to 1959 that were given to the Dutch reported visionary Ida Perdeman, which, by the way, has already fulfilled dozens of prophecies, things like the, the reinstitution of Israel as a state, war in the Balkans, uh, a new council, which was Vatican II, a man walking on the moon, uh, the Arab Spring in, in, that uh, initiated in Cairo, and, and warring around Jerusalem. These and many others have been already fulfilled as part of the reported message. 
And again, we're not going to get, uh, I'm not going to read any of the messages uh, in, in respect for this, but these are themes we have to know so that if in fact the reported Amsterdam event is similar to what happened with Divine Mercy, where it was, now Divine Mercy, remember, it was condemned for 20 years. That doesn't mean non conta, that means constantly non. And then it was resurrected, and thanks be to God that we have divine mercy for the world today. I pray and hope the same will happen regarding the reported apparitions in Amsterdam. That through prayers and even petitioning, there can be a reappreciation of what this message is. So I am in perfect obedience by saying I personally completely believe in the Amsterdam apparitions. But I, at the same time, respect and obey that December 30, 2020 decision. But I'm, 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 I'm asking the question. I think that the question begs itself. How much longer can we ignore Our Lady's remedies when we're seeing these things happen in our headlines, in our news? Uh, uh, the, the, the warring events in which Our Lady speaks about and has prophesied in many of these messages is now taking place, we have to return to her means, not just our means, not, not the UN. God bless the UN. I'm not saying that they don't, they're not good work there. I'm saying they're not the supernatural remedy, uh, nor is international uh, political efforts. Those are all good. I'm not saying we don't try those. I'm simply saying don't bet on those uh, in light of what we've seen in the past. The mother is the remedy. So I ask you to pray for the fifth Marian dogma. Pray this prayer. You know, this, by the way, is the image of Akita with the tears weeping down. Uh, it, it's a beautiful oriental version of the Lady of All Nations. You can't see the full image, which, in, which includes, uh, never get these sides right, which includes the, the cross, right? So that the whole statue has all of this uh, in it. This is just the face with, with an image. You get a little closer, you can see the tears coming down. Uh, but the prayer of the Lady of All Nations, which again, completely is approved, this is something we need to be praying. And I would encourage you, pray this prayer with Pope Francis in your heart. Pray for our Holy Father. Uh, you heard the message of Akita. Pray for the Pope, the bishops, and the priests. Well, pray that the Holy Father, in your rosaries, in your masses, in your offerings, that the Holy Father will accept this, that he will see this as remedy. Uh, and that, indeed, Our Lady's power, her supernatural power given by the Trinity, can bring us peace. But it's not going to happen until this dogma is proclaimed. So, pray the prayer of the Lady of all nations for the fifth Marian dogma. You've heard this before. Uh, but uh, true things need to be repeated. Pray this daily for the fifth Marian dogma. A lot of people pray the prayer at the end of each decade of the rosary. Petition the Holy Father. If you haven't written a petition to the Holy Father... And even if you have, perhaps you want to do so again with this new theme of peace. Holy Father, and you, you know, you, of course, you write your own petition, but it could be something like, Holy Father, in light of the great threats to peace today, please proclaim the fifth Marian dogma. It doesn't have to be long, my friends. Have it from your heart to his heart. And the more petitions he gets like that, the more he realizes that the people of God what he calls the holy people of God, which he recently said, when they all speak together, they're infallible. The people of God see that the dogma is the remedy and we want him respectfully to do this so we can have true peace. So you can write to the Holy Father. Again, it can be two lines. Uh, the address is easy. Pope Francis, 00120 Vatican City. That's all you need. Pope Francis, 0012. Excuse me, 00120 Vatican City. Uh, from the United States, it's three postage stamps. Uh, send them another reminder. Uh, peace is worth it. And as we're looking at things like conflict and abortion and family breakdown, uh, and you know the laundry list, we need this more and more, even when we have not engaged technically in World War III yet. Let's do what we can do as the people of God. Pray this prayer of the Lady of All Nations. If you want copies of this prayer, contact us at mary at motherofallpeoples.com. We'll send it to you free of charge. Write another letter to the Holy Father. Fathers have to be uh, 
reminded of things important for the family sometimes. Write a new letter. I'm going to. I encourage you to write a new letter to the Holy Father in light of the need for peace to please consider uh, proclaiming Our Lady as the spiritual mother of all peoples. Then we've done our task uh, as this uh, very uh, concerning scenario unfolds worldwide. But we keep our peace when we're in the Immaculate Heart of Mary and we're doing what she asks us to do to bring true peace to the world. So let's end by praying the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Spirit live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from degeneration, disasters, and war. May the Lady of All Nations, the Blessed Virgin Mary, be our advocate. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all.